Sam Cedar uh, has, has a very good one for you. It's also uh, in video form, so let's watch. Hi, Sam Cedar from The Majority Report. Uh, Dr. Stein, I know that you are uh, running to, to win the presidency, but there are a lot of people who I know who are contemplating voting for the Green Party because they hope that you will reach 5% and uh, qualify for federal fa uh, matching funds and then begin to uh, build the Green Party for future elections and uh, across the country. Uh, I know there are 100 uh, Green Party officials who have, uh, are sitting in elected office now, but also over the past 20 years, the number of statewide officials in the Green Party has actually gone down. Uh, what I want to know is, do you have a plan to build the Green Party in off-year, uh, non-election years? And if you could tell us what that plan is. Wonderful question. Thank you. Um, yes, there is definitely a plan. And, and I want to underscore that uh, by most recent polls, we are on the threshold of 5% right now. And you can argue that current polling does not tap unlikely voters who are millennials, who are people of color, who are immigrants. So we could, in fact, be at that threshold or potentially even over that threshold. And if word gets out that we can cancel student debt, uh, we could you know, massively uh, blow past that threshold. But that 5% number, I think, is a minimum uh, transformative goal, because then not only do we have um, funding with which to uh, really organize in the next election. It also means if we get to 5% that we are on the ballot in most states so we can actually hit the ground running in these next uh, presidential elections. But the point he makes about organizing right now for the long haul is exactly uh, you know, front and center. And it's one of the major reasons that I am running right now. In order to lift up this agenda, which is not just a global agenda, it's not just a national agenda, this is a local agenda as well about what our jobs are like, about whether our water supplies are gonna be ruined by fracking, about whether we are supporting public higher education and moving to free public higher education, which is what we should have. There is so much we can do, not only at the national level, but also at the local and the state level. There's been an enormous fear campaign, you know, certainly since Bush, Nader, Gore, there's been a fear campaign. But what we've learned is that the politics of fear delivers everything we were afraid of. All the reasons we were told you had to vote for the lesser evil, because you didn't want the expanding wars, you didn't want the meltdown of the climate, you didn't want the war on immigrants, you didn't want the endless expansion of the prison industrial state and the security state. That's exactly what we've gotten by allowing our voices to be silenced and to allow the lesser evil to speak for us. In many ways, the lesser evil paves the way to the greater evil because people stop coming out to vote for lesser evil politicians and parties that are throwing them under the bus, even if someone else could do it worse. People just stop participating in their democracy when it's so clear that it's not for us. So, you know, in my opinion, this is about standing up for what we need right now. For others who can't quite, you know, buy that, you know, I'd say make the most progressive vote you can and at least register green, contribute green, and then fight very hard for ranked choice voting as your very first action so that this politics of fear is something we can put behind us and actually begin bringing our moral compass to our democracy. Democracy is not a question of who do we hate the most and who do we fear the most. It's got to be about what is the future that we define for ourselves. So this election is about raising up those local candidates, and I urge you, go to your state Green Party website and find out who's running in your town and support their campaign as well. There are hundreds of candidates for office. Uh, our time has come. I mean, we the people, we deserve a political party that is of, by, and for us. Independent third parties have always led the way, whether it's been uh, in abolition. Remember that the parties of abolition were called spoilers back then. And during the effort to abolish slavery, we were called spoilers. The labor movement uh, was led by third parties. The women's movement, um, throughout our history, transformational change has been led by independent third parties. And 
in the case of Abraham Lincoln, an independent third party candidate actually rose to power and that third party became a first party in the course of that election. So our future is there for us to take back in our own hands. Stand up now like our lives depend on it. Together we are unstoppable. Thank you all for being a part of this. We need independent media to make sure that we hold corporate media accountable. The people that can make that happen is you. You make the Young Turks possible. TYTnetwork.com slash join. Join us. Be the revolution.